Well, hello and welcome. I'm Lee Jenkins, and uh, well, we're covering uh, Raymond Hollowell's uh, working with the law, and this particular chapter is the law of attraction. Now, this is one that I think that people seem to really, really uh, want to know more about, and uh, he does a great job here of describing exactly what it is. Uh, there's a few things that I might add, but you know, you got to keep in mind that this book was written in uh, uh, 1939, and you know, I think there might be some updates since then, but uh, Again, this book, uh, the entire book uh, is actually really quite well done, and so is this chapter. So I'm not trying to take anything away from it. I just want to uh, point out that uh, you know, maybe there might be some things that, you know, as we go through it, I might decide to add. Now, if you happen to be uh, following along, please uh, say hello, and if you could leave your name as well, uh, that would be fantastic because uh, the system I'm using here uh, is broadcasting it on, I think, five different places, and Although it'll tell me the messages, it doesn't tell me who's uh, sending the messages. So if you could do that, that would be fantastic. So anyhow, let's get started. Uh, you know, uh, Raymond Hallwell starts out with, he says, to, to desire is to expect, and to expect is to achieve. Now, that's very important because, again, you're going to find the law of attraction really is the law of vibration and attraction. And it's the vibration that you're in. So the, you know, it's the emotions, it's the... Uh, the, the belief, you know, so when he says the desire is to expect and to expect is to achieve, like that level of ex expectation uh, is a belief, it's a faith that it's all going to work out. So let's carry on with what, uh, what he has to say here. Uh, the underlying law that re uh, regulates supply in the world of effects has two important phases. One is desire and the other is expectation. Now he says uh, these mental attitudes represent lines of attractive force the former being the positive phase of the law and the latter, the negative phase. While phases must be com uh, complied with to obtain the best and greatest results. So the first phase of desire uh, embraces a positive process of attraction. That is when an individual earnestly desires a thing, he sets up a line of force that connects him and the invisible side of the good that's desired. So again, it's that passion, right? Uh, let's see here. What they, when an individual uh, earnestly desires a thing, he sets up a line of force that connects him with the invisible side of the good desired. Uh, should he weaken or change his desire, that particular line of force is disconnected or misses the goal. So, you know, you can think of that all the time. You can have the desire, you're focusing on want something I want, but then, you know, if you don't really truly believe it, then you're going to lose that desire and it's not going to happen, right? Now, it goes on to say here, but if, it, if he remains constant in his desire or ambition, the good demanded is sooner or later realized in part or, or in et entirety. The principle involved is that you cannot long or yearn for anything unless it already exists, which is true. Uh, if not in form, then in substance and desire is the motive power of, for calling it forth into visible appearance or physical effect. But it's important to understand anything and everything that's ever created, uh, everything is already here. It's just a matter of our using our imagination and our desires to bring it into, uh, into this world for us to enjoy. So he goes on to say, it is uh, no use to desire a thing unless you expect to get it, either in part or full. Very, very true. Desire without expectation is idle wishing and dreaming. Let's say that again. Desire without expectation. If you don't really truly believe that it's going to show up, then it's not, and it's simply idle wishing or dreaming. Uh, you see it all the time, you know, people uh, build uh, vision boards, which again, I highly recommend, but you don't have a belief and expectation of what's on that vision board is going to come into your life, then, uh, well, it's not. So <laughs> uh, you simply waste much valuable mental, sorry, mental energy in doing this. Uh, desire will put you in touch with the inner world of cause as a driving force of the mind, which acts in the invisible realm. Uh, so, sorry, something on my, never, never mind. <laughs> uh, and then he goes on to say, we all know that many persons desire good things, which they never expect, nor make any real effort, effort to grasp. They start out well and may get halfway, but not any further. When they learn to comply, with the other half of the process involved and learn to expect what they desire, 
most of their dreams and wishes will steadily materialize again. Sorry. And again, we meet people who uh, expect things they do not want, but which often come. Now, this goes on to say, um, this proves that expectation is a, an, a powerful, attractive force. Again, you know, that expectation is a, is a faith. It's a belief. Uh, if you don't have that, then chances are you're not going to be attracting too much or you're going to be attracting the things that you don't necessarily want. So, Okay, so when you expect something you do not want, you attract the, the undesirable. And when you desire a thing that is not expected, you simply dissipate valuable mental force. So even though, you know, what he's getting at there is you may have a desire for something, but if you don't actually expect that it's going to come, then it's not going to. Like you're, it says again, dissipating valuable mental force. So on the other hand, when you constantly expect that which you persistently desire, your ability to attract becomes irresistible. And he goes on to say here, desire connects you with the thing desired and expectation draws it into your life. This is the law. And again, you know, I would teach this lesson more of the law of vibration and attraction, but again, this is not wrong. You just say it saying a little bit differently. And it's that expectation that's causing that vibration. It's the emotional attachment to receiving the good that you desire. And again, that's what's going to uh, bring it into your life. And as he goes on to say, this is the law, right? Now, should you be uh, oppressed by poverty, hardship, limitation, or lack of any kind, begin now to operate this law of mind and gradually command more and more of the good in the form of a better things and improved conditions. It is your right. This is an important part here. It is your right and uh, to be happy and free. We should seek, therefore, to learn more of the unseen laws of mental creation and the marvelous possibilities dormant within our beings. Nature does not deprive us of any good and desirable thing, but has provided us with the material equipment and inner power to acquire and enjoy all the essential good to ensure a happy and worthwhile existence. Right? So you have everything you want. So let me just read that part again. Nature does not deprive us of any good and desirable thing, but has provided us with the mental equipment and inner power to acquire and enjoy all the essential good to ensure a happy and worthwhile existence. So, you know, again, he's saying, and I completely agree, that if you get in the right mindset and you build a beautiful picture of exactly what it is you want and you have a belief and expectation in your heart, it's going to show up. It always does. That's the law of vibration and attraction. So. He goes on to say here, application is the test of adequacy, as knowledge is of little or no value unless it can be used to, uh, to practical ends. So here's a simple method in the beginning for using the power of mind to increase the amount of good in our lives in conformity with the law. So he starts out by saying, and this is very important, form a clear and well-defined mental picture of what you want. That's exactly true. Step number one. So uh do not specify its particular form or how it shall come but simply desire firmly and gently the greatest amount of good in that direction so a lot of it too you know I, I do this with my clients i talk about you know don't worry so much about the actual goal or the amount of money you want to earn or things like that focus on what will it do for your life how will it change your life you know, get emotionally involved with the outcome and when you do that, then you're going to find that things start to move a lot faster. You know, when you focus simply on, you know, maybe an increase in income, for example, it's not really that easy to get emotionally involved with a, with a number. You can get emotionally involved with what that number represents in your life. It can mean, you know, a new home. It can mean taking more vacations. It can be helping family members. It can mean getting married. It can mean a lot of different things. So again, it's got nothing to do with the money part of it. It has to do with the emotional attachment to what that money uh, could provide. Uh, so he goes on to say, avoid a, a tense state of mind or any condition or, of strain or anxiety. Right. And so basically, you got to stop worrying about it. You need to let go and let God kind of an idea. It is better to do your mind picturing in odd moments when in quiet and restful conditions. Fully agree. Now, usually in your alpha state, that's early morning, um, 
late evening before bed. There's a great time to start to visualize the things that you want. Um, so let the idea or plan of good unfold in vivid mental picture, much the same as though it were a moving picture upon a screen. Now he goes on to say here, do not force the thought as pressure causes congestion and confusion. The calmer and more peaceful you are, the better the results. Very important. You gotta be calm and relaxed when you're doing this. Uh, the main thing is to hold the thought. Then proceed to nourish your desire or want with a calm, confident conviction that what you will that what you seek will come. There's that expectation again, right? Uh, as you persist in this state of mind, the good desired and tend, uh, will tend to gravitate towards you. It may come almost at once or at, as in respect to little things or less consequence, like an invitation, a book, a meeting, at a friend on the street, or it may come, uh, let me just, sorry, gotta change the page, uh, stuck, there we go. Well, anyways, what did I say here? Uh, Let's go back to that part there. It may come almost at once, as in respect to little things. Uh, it may come almost at once in respect to little things or less consequence, uh, of less consequence, like an invitation, a book, or meeting, uh, a, meeting a friend on, on the street, or it may come by uh, degrees over a period of time. According to the clearness and strength of your demand in a particular form of good desire. In the meantime, be reasonable and practical and do not and do what you can to promote its coming. So obviously you need to get a little bit busy. You, know, you need to take some types of action towards things. Uh, he goes on to say, I have little confidence in the Lord answering the one who rocks in an easy chair and waits for the desired thing to be placed on his lap. Again, I think that uh, you know when we you know, when the secret first came out, I think a lot of people got the idea that it was some kind of a magical trick. Uh, I guess it kind of is, you know, it's, uh, uh, it is kind of a magic trick, but you have to act, you know, and uh, he even points out here, he says, uh, somewhere it says the Lord helps them that helps themselves, right, and yes, action spells results, so that's uh, conceive, believe, achieve, and I always think it's more along the lines of conceive, believe, act, and achieve. So it's the actions that cause the reactions and the reactions are the results that you're looking for. So, you know, you, you can do this exercise over and over and over again. You may get you know really excited about it and it may actually work, but it's much more likely to come into uh, your life if you act and start moving towards it. And the thing to understand too with the law of attraction is you will be shown the path. Like the key is, is to understand that, you know, once you have that picture in your mind, you just need to start. You don't need to have all the, everything all figured out because how could you if you've never done it before then it's going to be something that uh, you're not going to have the answers for so just start and be open to receiving guidance and you will receive it this universe the source is going to provide you with anything and everything you need as long as you have a strong desire and an expectation of it happening so again but you have to act right uh this supplements your mental creative process and provides the channel for its expression then leave the results to the law. Right? As you do your part, the law will do the rest. Back to what I'm saying. Just get started. How well or how accurately you cooperate with the law determines the duration of time uh, apparently required to bring forth your supply. Time is a period created by man. Nature knows no time. It always re uh, responds in the present, in the now. Now, the duration, like, you know, I'm not going to really talk about it here, but uh, if you follow me on some of the other programs and that that I do, uh, we talk a lot about conditioning and paradigms. And a lot of this is going to, you know, the duration, like you can have a belief and expectation, but there could be parts of your subconscious mind, you know, things from the past, how you were raised and that that would cause doubt, cause worry, cause fear, things like that. And you're going to find that that doubt, worry, and fear is going to slow the process down dramatically. So one of the things you're going to want to do when doing this and really trying to bring whatever it is into your life, you're going to have to spend some time really trying to figure out why you are getting the results you're getting already. Like what, what is causing that? And again, it's going to go back to how you were conditioned probably during the you know, very first four or five years of your life. Uh, that would be environmental conditioning. 
um, you know, people you grew up with, who you went to school with, all that kind of stuff is going to have some effect on how quickly uh, these things are going to come into your life. So, now, it goes on to say here, in some instances, results that seem almost magical will appear. We just talked about that, right? And it can. Often where there has been a deep longing desire for a particular good with no expectation of its realization, the addition of action will finish the process with the happiest results. So again, it's you got to take action. And that's where I think a lot of people that have uh, maybe studied the law of attraction in the past um, don't seem to really quite understand that part of it is you do have to act. And again, you know, the things that are going to stop you from acting is going to be that conditioning those uh, paradigms that I was just talking about. So it's the, again, it, you have to you have to act. And if you're not acting in a manner that's gonna take you where you wanna go, then you're gonna have to take a good look deep down the side and say, okay, what's stopping me? What is this causing me to uh, not move forward and uh, go and uh, achieve whatever it is that I'm looking for? So, uh, and I forgot where I left off. <laughs> okay, the addition of act, okay. Now, in fact, you are always on the right side of the law when you combine the two essentials of desire and expectation, right? Now, you operate a hidden intelligence that puts you in touch with the actual ways and means of materializing your desires. Now, the principle underlying this process of attraction is as sound as uh, demonstrable as any principle in the science of mathematics. We all employ it every day, more or less, more or less, but usually unconsciously and therefore imperfectly, right? So the key again is unconsciously, that's your subconscious mind. Uh, okay, so uh, let's see what's a couple of parts in here I might just skip over. So bear with me if I'm just uh, checking my notes and I got highlights and stuff all over this these pages. So, uh, okay, I'm just gonna skip a, a, to a different, uh, paragraph here and he starts out by saying the mind is a magnet and attracts whatever corresponds to its ruling state whatever we image in our mind whatever we expect and think about will tend to bring into our lives the things and conditions that are in harmony therewith science has convincingly proven the existence and constant operation of the law of mental attraction for this reason everyone should be doubly careful about how and what he thinks very important. You know, we're always thinking about what we don't want, and we wonder, we wonder why it keeps showing up. Um, again, you can change that. So uh, it's very important to understand this. So for this reason, everyone should be doubly careful about how and what he thinks about. Our predominant mental attitude is the primary cause of most everything that comes into our lives. And the sooner we realize this truth, the sooner we shall begin to improve our lives and progress. So again, it's that mental attitude, that pro that predominant mental attitude. Like, if you want to uh, have a million dollars, but you know you've never made more than forty thousand, and you grew up in an environment where everybody you know, went to a job every day, uh, then you're going to have a hard time uh, getting to that point of a million. Can you? Absolutely. Can you change that conditioning? Absolutely. But it takes work and it takes understanding. So uh, it's not going to happen overnight, but this is what's going to cause you to uh, have things come into your life sooner rather than later. Well, he goes on to say, we must seek to become imbued with the desire to advance and give the law a chance to help us, to help us. Everything will, will then work toward our aid. Obstacles will strengthen our resolve to win. Discouragement from others will only serve to strengthen and to arouse us to a stronger activity. We will see more clearly and understand more fully that every difficulty is an opportunity to advance. Every stumbling block is a stepping stone to success. Our so-called burdens will lose their heaviness because the spirit within us is unconquerable and when evoked by desire and aspiration will unfailingly come forth in greater power and richer intelligence. This will guide our thoughts and actions to those pathways that lead to the highest or the heights of conquest. So, when you really start to understand this, again, I highly recommend you do understand this. Is the reality is, is you can have anything you want, but you got to learn how to actually bring it into your life. Um, again, we're not conditioned necessarily. Some are, uh, 
but majority of people are not conditioned to actually receive the things that they want in life. Um, can you have them? Yes. Can you change that conditioning? Yes. And, uh, you know, if you want to talk further, that just go to my website, liamjenkins.com. I actually offer a free uh, session where we, we'll talk about this. I'm pretty confident that at the end of the session that you'll be, uh, you'll be on your way. And uh, don't worry about, there's no obligation on the buy, no credit card or anything like that. Yeah, just, uh, it's free. Uh, if you decide you want to work with me down, going down, uh, down the road, well, great, but I'm not a pushy salesperson. So, uh, okay, he carries on here and he says, the law of mental attraction acts along the same lines as the law of gravity. It is a, as definite and as accurate. Uh, you have heard the law expressed in such statements as birds of a feather flock together or like attracts like or things equal to the same things are equal to each other. The thoughts and the actions of people draw to them people of their own type and kind. It's difficult to tell one just where uh, he may fail to attract his needs as no two people think alike and therefore no two people make the same mistakes. However, I shall name and explain three steps one, one can use to build our reality, build up our realities. By following closely these suggestions, he can note where he may have failed. Okay, so the very first step is interest. And again, I need to move this page. Bear with me for a second here. I think that's right. Is that right? Okay, so anyways, it starts out with interest. The first step uh, to take is called interest. Interest is paying special attention to same, some object or thing. It is being definitely concerned about someone or something. Interest is tending to see uh, in the outer world what is already existent in one's mind. Things you think of that give you joy, pleasure, wisdom, and satisfaction are interest. Right? So those are the things that you want to keep in mind. Now, I'm going to skip over a thing. He's got some stories that he talks about here. And again, I highly recommend reading all this. And if you uh, don't have uh, working with the law, uh, from Raymond Hollowell, you can uh, just reach out to me and I'll be happy to give you a downloadable version of it. Again, great book. There's 11 uh, laws in here. Uh, so again, if you don't have that, I highly recommend that you reach out and uh, I'll be happy to give it to you. Okay, so I'm going to skip again. Like I just said, skip it over a few things. Uh, let's go to this part here. It's so easy for people to allow themselves to get into a rut. And it's always a mental rut before it becomes a material one. Very true, right? We keep focusing on the problems and then we find ourselves dealing with those problems, right? Uh, people drift along unknowingly, unconsciously and aimlessly into unhappiness and blindness. A very lovely person came to me with a picture with a problem, the like of which has caused many a woman to give up and lose their, the very thing that she wants most. This woman had a nice home, a well-providing husband, many servants, again, keep in mind this is 1939, <laughs> Many servants and two fine sons to be proud of, but with all that, she was most unhappy. Now, when her boys were growing up, she devoted all her time to their training and care. Now, they had married and uh, were making their own homes. Um, while she was so tied at home, uh, her husband was becoming a successful man, and his and this took him out of his, out to his clubs and made new friends instead of other women, as well as men. He was quite occupied with his interests. He came home at nights, but most of his weekends were spent elsewhere. Here she was with a big house and servants, plenty of money, but no love or happiness. She realized the breach was widening and knowing that soon her husband would want a divorce, she was forced to seek a way out. Now, after lengthy analysis, I learned that she had a spark of interest left in art and literature. So recommended that she take a trip abroad for the summer to see the new sites and to plan a busy winter with new studies. She returned feeling refreshed and anxious to begin the work. She joined the literary club and liked it. Gradually, she worked into some small uh, dramatic parts until one day her interest burst out into a, a flaming desire to go further and the work and the work. Home servants, loneliness, all receded with the new ambition. In short, she advanced into radio work and has been very successful. Her sons are proud of her achievement. Her husband has become almost jealous with uh, his attentions, and her happiness is supreme. 
And he goes on to say here, you see, one must keep up some interest. One must keep his mind active and keen in order to avoid losing one's attractiveness and satisfaction. Our highest interests should govern our thoughts and not the material things. Right? The material things are, are only the means through which we express our interests. Good point, right? The material things are only the means through which we express our interests. A strong magnetic power is founded upon a strong idea or principle. This idea or principle directs our interests, and this in turn develops our inner power of attractiveness. Again, that goes back into the whole idea of the law of vibration and attract uh, attraction. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to skip over again. So uh, the next part here is attention. So to have a highest interest is not enough. We must inject. Uh, this interest into our daily labors. Our intention must portray our interest, and the keener our interest, the more intense we will be about our attention. It is our interest and attention that draws from the outside world such facts as are formed in the mind. As we direct our attention to our interest, this magnetizes our power of attraction, which draws to us much of the same type as our thoughts, right? What you think about, you bring about. When much of our interest is taking up with our full attention, we shall find that most of our petty and selfish learnings, leaning stories will be absorbed by our higher interest and will be steadily, uh, steadily progressed. So again, this is all about having faith, falling in love with the idea uh, and giving it your full attention. And that's the key. If you wanna have success in your life, it requires full attention. No, it doesn't mean you have to ignore people you love and things like that. It just means that this has to be a priority. And if it's not a priority, then there's a pretty good chance it's not happening. You know, you think about it, like people go their whole life and saying, oh, I wish I did this. I wish I did that. We'll do it. You know, we still do it. Like, it doesn't matter even if you're retired. Do it now, right? So uh, I skipped over a bunch of things here. Um, let's go, let's just say, okay. So now if you believe in honesty, then you support the principle of honesty with all your attention. You direct this attention to do and think all things in an honest manner. If you should have an opportunity to cheat or steal from another, you adhere to your principle and refuse to take advantage of what may seem a trivial thing. Now, this is important, again, when you start focusing on vibration. If your vibration is that of cheating and stealing, there's a very good chance that that's going to happen to you. Or whatever you did end up cheating to get or steal, you're probably going to lose it. And then not only lose that, but you probably lose something else as well because you created a vibration, an energy around stealing. And it's kind of silly to think it's not coming back. Like most uh, people you see that uh, you know, end up in jail or something along those lines, uh, we're focusing on the same kind of idea and then they end up in jail. So it will come back and haunt you. So uh, honesty is always, a, I think, an excellent policy. So. Anyways, uh, what do we? If you should have an opportunity, I already read that part. Uh, they always seem trivial. They always seem trivial in the beginning, but uh, that is only the beginning. Such trivial trivials grow with a cancerous direct rapidity. You rarely see the surface re uh, surface record for remaining loyal to your standard, but in time, uh, you will not only see but feel its satisfaction. Very true. As you watch closely your dealings and force every issue to comply with your principle, you are charging your mind with honesty and it becomes magnetic to attract honest endeavor and permanent success. Now, even this, you know, maybe discussing money in this particular consideration here, but, you know, this applies to relationships. You know, if, if you uh, have that mindset of deceit, then you can pretty much guarantee that the people you bring in your life have something very similar. Um, you know, if you want to have a, a, a happy, healthy, honest, loving relationship, then you need to be that person. And when you become that person, and you're going to attract to you someone on that same vibration. Uh, okay. The uh, next part here says, next, take truth and follow it along until you have worked it, it, it the same way. There are so many ways that truth may be challenged that you need not expect to accomplish your work in a week or two. It becomes a growth. 
After a time, you will find your interest and attention so taken up with truth in all its forms that you will no longer attract deceit uh, or dishonesty to you or in your affairs. Very true. Huh? I remember a statement I heard when I was young in this work. The owner of a store spoke of a little lady who often came in to buy cards and gifts for her family. It had been suggested that she pass off some in inferior article on the lady, little lady. But the woman replied, oh no, she is too honest to be cheated. I wondered then why she had made the remark, but I understand it now. Such can be said of all of us when we earn what that little lady had earned. Okay, so where are we off here? And I'm just checking my notes. I've got so much stuff on here. Uh, I have a tendency to do that. I highlight, I scratch things out, and I write stuff on and notes on the side. But okay, uh, yeah, I'm just going to skip the. I got going to skip a couple of paragraphs here. Um, okay, so Raymond Hollowell starts goes on to say here: set up a standard or a measurable uh, measurement for yourself if you have not already done so. Take one thing or one thought at a time and build upon it. As you strive to give your attention to some constructive interest, you will cease giving so much attention to a lesser one. You do not have to work over the things as some folks may do. They go about treating, a, uh, treating against dishonesty and the like when they should adjust their minds to be free from thinking and fearing dishonesty. Okay? Very good point. Stop, stop focusing on it. Whatever we focus on grows, right? So the law requires us to make the correction within ourselves. And if we do our work there, it will proceed to work for us outwardly. So again, that goes back to what I was saying about paradigms and uh, your conditioning. Like it's that's the inner work that you need to be working on. Um, okay, so he says, goes on to say, the law requires us to make the correction within ourselves. And if we do our work there, it will proceed to work for us outwardly. It is our thought which stimulates interest and directs our attention. Therefore, let, let us not wander away from the source and cause of attraction, the things that we do not want. Okay, so the, the last step here that he's talking about is that expectation. So he says the last step we take is expectation. This is an active form of attention. It is attention with intensity. It may be likened to the actions of a cat that waits patiently at the mouse hole. The cat expects to catch his prize at any moment. He expects to get the mouse because he believes he will get it eventually. If the cat did not believe and expect to catch the mouse, his interest and attention would, would lack that intensity which is now present. His energies would not be so actively called forth. When you believe in the probability of success in your undertaking, your experience, you experience the keenest interest in your work. This interest is intensified with expectation and anticipation. Through this, you will draw to you the success you are working for. Your expectation must be built up with your interest and attention. Now, again, this is something that's really important is uh, it's really gonna be difficult to have that expectation and that desire if you've been conditioned to believe that you're not deserving in some way. So that goes back to, again, the conditioned mind. So, and again, that's the part that I think like the way I would be explaining this to clients of mine is more along the lines of law of vibration and attraction because it's the vibration that's causing the attraction. You're not going to bring something into your life unless you're basically in harmony with it. You have to be in love with it. And that's what he's saying, that desire, that expectation is, is that vibration. So the problem that's going to stop you is, is again, is that conditioned mind. It's those paradigms. Again, if you if you were raised in an environment where you know, uh, only certain people are allowed to benefit in certain ways and you're not one of them and you go through life believing that to be true, well, then you're going to have a hard time attracting to you the things that you want. Now, again, all of this can be changed. It doesn't matter where you started at. All that matters is where do you want to go? And when you have a really good, clear understanding of where you want to go and you have that desire and that expectation, you will attract to you everything necessary in taking you to that, that goal that you have. So he goes on to say here, um, we're getting near the end. And, um, I don't have my uh, normal uh, uh, co-host. Co uh, so again, I'm doing this. Uh, we're, 
I don't have anybody to bounce these things off of. So hopefully uh, you're going to get something from this. Uh, but again, I, I, it's not going to be the full hour. Is uh, you never know. I might start, <laughs> I might start talking about something. Uh, but anyways, he's finishing out here by saying, when we charge our thoughts so firmly with the idea that there's there are no failures, then we expect success. Our mind becomes strengthened with our conviction and, like a magnet, draws to us through the principles upheld. Whatever desire is up, up, uppermost at the time. To desire is to expect, and to expect is to achieve, right? So again, this is a great chapter. I think, you know, uh, if someone's interested in uh, having a, um, a copy of uh, this particular book, just let me know. I'll be happy to give you a downloaded version of it. Um, and again, too, like, this is really has a great deal to do with your conditioned mind. You know, we, we're born perfect. We're a clean slate, but we're born into an environment where, you know, you got probably mom and dad and family members that love you to death, but they can't give you something they don't have. And that's where this all falls in the problems is because again, like, you know, I grew up with the idea that, you know, you got a job, you traded your time for money, you got an hourly wage. And what was most important is that you, uh, you know, you got benefits and a pension and things like that. That was, that was the key. Um, but that doesn't create happiness, or at least it didn't for me. I think it does for some people. I know some people like that, that well, have wonderful lives. They built beautiful lives. You know, for me, I was a very creative guy and uh, that didn't work for me. So, you know, I had to learn to change that. And that took me to, you know, studying with many different things, reading a lot of books. I studied with Bob Proctor, who I think uh, uh, we've lost him recently, but uh, I think he was a master of this type of thing here. Um, but it's that, again, if you're not in that right vibration, like you could be saying, you know, I want this, I want that, I want this. But if there's a part of you down deep inside saying, well, you don't deserve it, you're not worthy of it, well, you're not going to attract it. But you can change it. So, again, I highly recommend that you not only study this, but maybe study some other things or even reach out to me and you know, book one of my uh, breakthrough sessions because this is exactly what I talk about. Um, I'm pretty confident that at the end of the call, you're going to see things a little differently. Uh, it's actually kind of exciting to watch. You know, so they don't spend a lot of time, 45 minutes. Sometimes it's an hour, but uh, during that particular time, you're going to you're going to learn some things about yourself. And I'm going to give you some lessons on how to actually immediately make some changes. So again, I highly recommend you reach out. You can send me a message here on the. Uh, Facebook or wherever it is that you're watching this or go to my website at leemjenkins.com and uh, just look for the breakthrough session and you can pick a day and time that suits you and we'll have a chat so I'm going to let you go uh, unfortunately uh, I don't have a full hour's worth of information here for you but uh, uh, we'll be back again next week with more of uh, working with the law and uh, also tomorrow which is Wednesday uh, this is not done live, but it's our Elevate uh, Roundtable where we kind of get together and we uh, have a conversation with a group of people. It's usually, you know, ranges from eight to 12 people. Uh, if you go to myelevatenetwork.com, you can see a link where you can register for it. That's the only requirement is you register and we'll actually uh, email you a, uh, a uh, link to the site. It's a Zoom link and you can come on the call and uh, Tomorrow, we're going to actually be talking about manifesting, come to think of it. Uh, we usually just pick a topic, but it's an open discussion. We'll end up talking about a lot of different things. So, again, that's tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, go to myelevatenetwork.com, and you can register there. And if you're already registered, we'll see you tomorrow at uh, 3 p.m. And then on Thursday, we're doing our very final episode on the Think and Grow Rich. This will be outwitting the six... Uh, fears or whatever, something like that. <laughs> Six Ghosts of Fear, I think it's called. Uh, excellent chapter again, the last, uh, very last chapter of Think and Grow Rich. We've been through the whole thing. This will be, uh, I guess, our 14th uh, episode. And again, that's Thursday, 3 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, I hope to see you all there. So thanks for coming. Uh, again, uh, I see somebody said, this is awesome. Somebody else said, thank you, Lee. But it doesn't tell me your names, but uh, I have a feeling I know who they are. So anyways, uh, uh, I think actually at least one, maybe two of you might be on the Elevate uh, uh, Roundtable tomorrow. So anyhow, I'm Lee Jenkins, and we'll see you again soon. Don't be shy. Check me out at leemjenkins.com, and go ahead and sign up for one of those breakthrough sessions. I think you're going to be really excited that you did. Anyways, we'll see you next time. I'm Lee Jenkins.